What's up, hybrids? Welcome back to another episode of the Phantom Hybrid Podcast. This is Hanako, and I am here with Anthony and Mike for the first time in 2024. And we are discussing season two, episode one of Marvel's What If? What if Nebula had joined the Nova Corps? Also um, known as Marvel Presents Blade Runner. <laughs> You know, that's the funny thing, because literally everybody that I've heard talk about this episode, that's what they say. And I haven't like I haven't seen the new Blade Runner and I haven't watched the old one since like the 80s. So I don't remember much of it. So I'm just like, well, so, well, so, they, they, li- they literally said that every episode of What If is like an homage to yeah. some 80s movie. Okay, It is. You know, yeah. And I mean, and this, I mean, I mean look. Literally, this movie, even down to Nebula's car, is is basically them retelling Blade Runner. Ah. Like literally, her car is almost an exact replica of Decker's car in Blade Runner. Even down to the butterfly door, it's the same damn car. Mm-hmm. And there and there's shots that are straight out of the movie. Oh, literally, okay. like like yeah, and and like um the duster that she puts on when she puts on Yondu's thing. Mm-hmm. Is it is Deckard's duster? Is this? Ah, okay. Nothing. It is. Now, I I will say that was one of the cooler parts of the episode to me because I was like, you know, I never really kind of made that connection, but once she put the stuff on, I was like, you know what? I could I could I would be down for that in live action. I really would. <laughs> yeah, it's like, and she's blue. It's like, how do we not put that together? It's like a blue person puts on the red puts on the red mohawk, and I'm like. Oh damn, that fits. Why? Oh right, he was blue. Oh never mind. Okay, but you know, no. When she when she did that, it's like I feel bad so bad for Craglin because she instantly had control of that arrow and and was like whipping it around, killing people without having to practice and throw it at people and and like make well, it go like she, five miles an hour. She is cyborg, so yeah. it was probably yeah. a bit easier for her for her to mimic yeah, but, his whistle yeah. and. And then also, yeah, I mean that's how she found it anyway. Yeah. Yeah. Well, she didn't she didn't mimic his whistle. She had she the had one of the memories of him yeah. and was able to pull it. But one of the things that I, that I like about the what if series, and this is from last season to this season, um, I like that they they did basically what um the later Avengers movies did when when they mixed the Guardians of the Galaxy in with the Avengers. It's like you put these characters that you never would think to pair together and you put them in a story and and tell this story. And even though it doesn't, it's not similar to what we know from the quote unquote canon, the, the real world stuff, it makes sense. Even as this is supposed to be alternative, but I could actually see some of this stuff making sense like the whole thing about everybody being so comfortable with nebula that they call her nebby that that was weird to me because i was like you just don't think of nebula like the nebula we know as building those kind of relationships at least not until after everything that happened with thanos but it mm-hmm. fit yeah here Spe- okay. speaking of relationships let's just go ahead and get this the I was relationship just about- out of the way mike I was just about My to say My man is back. <laughs> the man is back. I was I was like, okay, they, there's no no chance they're not going to have him in this. Then as soon as, the, as soon as I saw the credits roll, the opening credits roll, and I saw Seth Green's name, I was like, yes. He's when here. he showed up, I paused it, and I said, Mike is going to be insufferable. <laughs> but <laughs> you know what? Man. And he owns a casino. It fits perfectly. I have the to say. The only thing they didn't have was a... <laughs> I have to say, as much as I tease Mike about his obsession with Howard the Duck, this episode sold it for me. I, it I have to say. It worked. It's like, yeah. and I don't know if it was just that the original, even after we did the rewatch a couple of years ago for Mike's birthday episode, I don't know if it was just the the live action throwing me off or if it was just that it was so dated. But every time we've seen Howard in the, the MCU at this point or in um, the What If episodes, I'm like, okay, this makes a little more sense. This episode, I was all in. 
I was all in from like, from his get- demeanor to the way he talked to his his business attitude to the to the bandana and the 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 I was all in before that where he had the purple suit with the zebra collar I was like this is fucking t- like all he needed was like a cigar in his mouth I was like this would have been that would have been the perfect Howard and I was just like this is fucking awesome Ugh. yeah he, he it was. It was really good placement for this particular character based on the ambiance and the style. He actually fit in this. Yeah. And yeah. It, was, it was a perfect fit for him. Yeah. What I was yeah. not expecting was for Korg and Groot to be there with him and for that to <laughs> make sense. Groot it made was so much sense. Yeah. The whole Especially rock, paper, when they're sitting there playing fucking, fucking paper, scissors, rock. What'd you say, Mike? Yeah, that's why I said it was, it, that was fucking hilarious. It's like, but it, but it's a strong, it's strong paper because it's made of rock. And I will say this too: Korg is quickly becoming one of my favorite, like all time yeah. characters in the MCU because he's so he's so smart, but he's stupidly smart. <laughs> like you don't like like how we're saying like. What kind of weirdo would know this? And he starts spouting off everything about this little map that Yondu has. <laughs> like, you know this stuff. Oh, da 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 da. Wait, how do you know this stuff? It's like you don't expect. Okay, let's say you don't expect a pile of rocks to have the kind of knowledge that Korg does, but he does, and he does it in such a simple and like. Isn't isn't there a saying you're dumber than a pile of rocks? Yeah, so it like it turns it on his head. Yes, it really does, and it makes so much sense. Like all of this, just it makes so much sense. And well, I, I don't get. It looking I, at I this didn't like, get. I have to watch again because I didn't get why how Groot and Korg ended up there. I don't think they ever told us. It was just okay. it was just there. No, they just worked. They, they just worked at the casino. That scene where where Korg started spouting off about the schematics reminded me of the scene in Guardians Three when when Drax started speaking the language of the little kids, and they were like, "How did you? How did? Why did you tell us that you knew how to speak language?" He was like, "You didn't ask." Right. And it's like, yeah, it kind of reminded me of that scene. But yeah, it's like I agree with you. I think. Because at first, when I when he was first introduced to Ragnarok, I just thought he was kind of a throwaway character. I was like, oh, okay, whatever. He's going to be like a little minor comic relief. I'm not going to see anything. But it's like, everything I've seen him in, he's actually kind of stolen the scenes that he's been in. Mm-hmm. So it's actually, he's, he, I mean, he's he's growing on me too. Right. Yeah, And you I said about, that. you mentioned about how they were able to get all these voices back, you know, except for... um. Glenn Close wasn't there. Glenn Close, right. Except right. for her. Um, it, think about it. It's sort of an easy paycheck. You can do it from your home if you mm-hmm. don't need to go down to the studio. Yeah. And it's literally just a few lines. I mean, you can literally do it in the afternoon. Yeah. So it's it's, it's probably not that hard to get them to do it. Yeah. If they're able I mean, to fit but... in their schedule. I think maybe she only can do it because she couldn't fit in her schedule. Yeah, but that's the thing. Like, we well, we were having this conversation uh, before we started recording about how it, it, if you look at the um, the voice talent for all of the episodes for this season, <clears throat> there are just some people, especially with the way that you know people have been going through quote unquote Marvel blow, uh, burnout. You know, some people are now. You know, you have people who were in the films and they're like, "Oh, I really didn't want to be in there," and you know, just all the different negative stuff. So the fact that they got so many of the original actors to come back and voice their animated counterparts, that was impressive to me. Like, especially in certain later episodes, I was like, wait, they got, they got, they got who back? What? Mm -hmm. You know, it was, it was just very interesting to me. And then to put Yarog in this episode, because again, like I told y'all, when we discussed Miss, uh, the Marvels, I couldn't remember much of Captain Marvel until I rewatched it. And then it's like when I saw Jude Law's name in the opening credits, I said, wait, are they bringing y'all wrong? How? Like, how does this even work? And then again, with the way that they tell these what if stories, the situations are so different from what we're expecting from what we've seen, but yet they make sense. I could e- even the pairing up of Nebula and Yon Rog. And the back and forth, the back and forth banter in this episode between the characters mm-hmm. was like spot on. 
A plus. Because I was like, yeah. And even like even th- this speaking towards people that brought back, they they even brought back um Peter Serafinowitz, who played the um the douchebag douchebag Novacor guy who said who called called Yondu trash. As like soon that's the as same he guy that was in his mouth. I was <laughs> like, oh my god, this <laughs> but yep. but I mean it just it works. I mean the whole premise behind this episode. So we start out the episode. Yondu is dead. Someone has killed him, and um, Nebula uh, again has joined the Nova Corps. You know, so the way that they're telling this episode is that in this particular universe, when Thanos was trying to Thanos everything. Ronan betrayed him, killed Thanos, killed Gamora. And so Nebula was kind of left out the space to, I don't know, you, you can't say die with a cyborg, but she's not, well, I guess it's, she's more, she's a cyborg, like more mechanical than, than human. So they just kind of left her out there. And Nova Prime found her, rescued her, gave her a second chance at life and as a result nebula joins the nova corps she swears their oath and she becomes one of them so she's the one that is first on the scene of yondu's murder and of course the asshole guy from nova corps as that mike just mentioned he comes in he's like mad trash to to nebula calling her names and just it's like do you like she could probably squeeze the life out of you with her index and her, her index finger and her thumb like really but again this is not that same nebula okay so nebula she leaves they clean up the crime scene and as she says you know they're so busy focusing on trying to find the murderer's weapon that they didn't look for the most important part the victim's weapon so that's mm-hmm. how she gets yandu's arrow that's how she finds the schematics that he has that he apparently died to protect because the arrow was in hiding it wasn't with yandu's body so the whole course of this episode is nebula trying to figure out what these schematics are and what secret yandu died to protect and when nova prime contacts nebula and she's like okay so this is why I, I I hired you. This is why I took a chance on you because I knew you you would see things that we can't see. I need you to solve this and I do need you to do it by whatever means necessary. So Nebula sets out on her, her task. She goes to Howard and that's when uh, Korg says, oh, you know, this, this little map has all kinds of things in it, like has random things in it. And then it has the, the schematics for the shield that Nova Corps placed around the planet oh they're on um what what's the name of the planet um xandar xandar Xandar. yeah which which in our timeline was destroyed by thanos when he got the um power stone Mm -hmm. but because things uh changed Changed. Mm -hmm. ronan is now trying to get to the planet and she placed the shield around the planet so apparently with these schematics it appears that someone's trying to put turn you know they're they're trying to take the shield down so she's like okay i need to find someone who can hack into xandar's uh security so that we can figure out the schematics and you know blah 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 and this is where yon rock comes into the picture side side note it's been five years since they closed the planet off so that means you can't like this is this is a planet where interplanetary travel is the norm, you know, y'all can't go nowhere. Y'all can't leave. It's and like everyone who is visiting is trapped. <laughs> you on you on punishment for for no other reason than you got some maniac on the outside trying to get to your planet. Like, and it can't ba- be ba- open for fifty years. It's basically COVID for five point. years. Yeah. yeah. Oh, please don't. Mm-mm. We're not gonna. We're not gonna say that out loud. We're not gonna say that out loud because I I couldn't mm -mm, no, but yeah, I mean at least I get to walk around and and still exist, but still it's like if you're used like think about it if you got family on another planet that means you can't go you can't go see your family you're you're done and I'm sure she did that without anybody else's like 
say so. She, I'm sure that there was no vote. She, she did what she was trying to do to protect the planet. Understood. Okay. So Nebula breaks Yarrog out of prison, a prison that she ended up putting him in because he was a hacker, which is so weird. But she takes him to the mainframe so that she can try to, you know, figure out who is behind all this. And of course, Yarrog betrays her, takes the schematic, leaves her to die. And then this is where we get all the the interesting stuff with Howard and Korg and group because when Nebula comes to, she goes back to Howard's casino to ask for weapons and another arm because her arm is gone and all this other stuff. And then this is where we see like them basically become Rambo and company. And it was just, I was like, it, like, it, was, it was the Guardians of the Galaxy. Basically, it was, it was the it was like, Guardians of the Galaxy. Mm-hmm. It's like a, it's like a budget version of the Guardians of the Galaxy. It's like you know. But it was so funny because when she cra- she crashed into one of the casino um, games, and I was like, "Wait a minute, this is wrong. Those games yeah. are not supposed to be." <laughs> <laughs> this like the I whole said, episode, perfect just, fucking casting. It, it really, really. I when oh, when God. I saw this episode, and I mean, yes, I'm looking at him right now with the purple suit with the zebra collar holding his alcohol in his hand. <sighs> looking at it, I was just like, okay, I can see why Mike is obsessed. Because it if if this was the version of Howard I had been getting all this time, I probably would have been equally obsessed because he was cool as hell in this one. But I I don't know. I, I just I don't yeah. Maybe now with the technology and with everything that we have now, I could deal with the Howard the Duck live action. But right now, no, just leave him, leave him in the what if universe. He is perfect. And be, also, if you think about it, if they put him in the regular movies, he probably won't be this cool because these are alternate versions of these characters. They don't mm-hmm. act the way the characters that we know act for the most part. So Howard might not be that cool. So maybe, you know, maybe know. just no, 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 absolutely not. No, we no, you're not gonna do that to my boy. I refuse to allow it to happen. No, he will be just as cool because in in the snippets that we've seen of him in Guardians 2 and Guardians 3, he was he was he looked he looked he was really fucking cool, especially that like the part where he was sitting in Guardians 3 where he was playing cards with Craglin and all them is like that was like a miniature version of this story of how oh, he that's was. That's right. He was okay. Yep, you're right. You're right. I forgot about that part. Yeah. I forgot about so that. So yes, okay. he yes, he can. Yes, he, he can. can. Okay. okay, I'll give you that. Don't, I'll, don't, I'll give don't you mess that. with Howard. Don't Thank mess you. with Howard. I'll Howard. give you that. Thank you. I'll give you that. So but anyway, so like I said, Yon Rock. He betrays her. And then she finds out not only is it Yarrog who betrays her, which of course, I mean, this is a guy you just broke out of prison. You really expected him not to betray you. But the kicker is Nova Prime is the one who is trying to give Ronan the or, or not, she's not trying to give Ronan anything. She's the one that's trying to bring down the shield so that Ronan can invade the planet because she feels like um what is it's too much for them to have to hide and it's not going well and you know the the planet is in chaos now so might as well let him take over especially since he's going to allow me to stay in charge <laughs> why why she would part. believe him why why she would right. even believe him right that's what i was about His to say whole so, point is to commit genocide like you would think she would be smart enough to know that him telling her that oh yeah you can be in charge is just to get her to comply and do what he wants to do no because because see my theory every theory is that she had a boyfriend that was in another galaxy that she got cut off from and she couldn't find anyone else in that dome that that could actually that actually satisfy her so she was, now, we, we we have to be we, we have to say significant other because it could be a girl. I'm sorry, so you're you're exactly right. Significant other could have been a could have been a woman or a man. 
or Real. another creature because right. this, thing, this is the entire universe. Yeah. But whatever, she she was missing her significant other, and they're they're probably on Earth, and they were like, "Why haven't I heard from her? She must not like me." And she's just like, "I miss you. I miss my person, my other." And she's like, "Fuck this shit." Hey, yo, can I get out of here? So she's gonna let the whole planet just be raised to the ground because she needs to get dick down. I I just don't know if I buy hey, that. Hey, the heart. I, I the think heart it wants just what the heart wants. I think. I think. I think. I think she's in the same position as everyone else on the planet. They're all have. They all have cabin fever. So she's making bad decisions. Yeah. Because they're all stuck. Like but Hanukkah this is said, a they are space faring race, and they've been stuck for five years. Right. Yeah, but this is a horrible. This isn't just a bad decision. This is a horrible decision. Like letting him in, someone who wanted to conquer the planet. Because I mean, just so you can, she's already. She's she's like, well, I can still be in charge. You're in charge now. You're and you're making stupid charge. decisions. <laughs> I'm like, this is. I was like, why are you doing? It's like. You just can't take it. That like, are you, were you trying to get a Whataburger down here? I mean, damn, what the fuck's wrong with you? Just like, let shit go. Like, let's talk about the fact that once she revealed, <laughs> once once she basically uh, showed her face to Nebula as the traitor, and she's talking to Yon Rog, and she was like, "Okay, kill her." And then um, when you're done with her, what what did it say? Um, they melt her down. Melt her down, and you walk off like. I don't know if they have TV on the on on on, on Xandar, but like you don't ever tell the person who's down and out. Like you you say what their fate is going to be to them and expect them not to do anything, especially Nebula. Like before she became a Nova Corps member, she's she a daughter of Thanos. Right. Okay, hold on. So you don't so, think at some it, point. When she's when her life is being threatened, that she's not gonna reach into those recesses and be like, "Oh, wait a minute, I forgot, oh, bitch, show y'all." And you okay, walk so off. Okay, so hold on. And you expect somebody else to make sure that happens, and then he. So so look, this is her reasoning. She said, the world's falling apart. People are at each other's throats. We can't go on like this. And sometimes there's just no shame in surrender. But y'all gonna she die. She just quit. She quit. She was like, fuck this shit. I'm tired. It's like, I'm, I'm, I'm tired and tired of walking around the streets and seeing people fight all the time. You're, you're, you're Nova Prime. You're in charge of the fucking police corps, basically. Like, handle shit. Don't just quit and be like, fuck it. I'm just gonna... I mean, this is just like... This is just like I don't, I don't okay. It's it's just ridiculous. It's ridiculous to me because it's like it all you're doing is quitting. You you just and like, then you, know you what? expect Fuck people to to let you do the same job after the invasion. Well, I mean, they're not going to have a choice. It's like he he's probably just gonna he's gonna let her run Nova Corps, but he's but 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 Ro Ronan is still going to be over the planet. It's like... Ronan is not going to stay on Ronin that planet. Ronan is going is gonna to raise... do what he has to do, and then he's going to take his ass somewhere else and find another planet to He's to going over. to raise that planet to the ground and kill mm -hmm. every Zendarian he can get his hand on mm -hmm. and go yeah. about his business because mm -hmm. that's the only reason why he's there. Right. He's not there to conquer the planet. He's not. He's not trying to conquer it. He's not trying to create an empire. He wants to murder them all because mm -hmm. his planet destroyed his family. Like he doesn't like them. Yeah. Yeah, he put, yeah, he put her in charge of a power of rubble. Should be in charge of that. Exactly. But again, died. this is assuming he lets her live, and we already know he's not gonna do that. Gonna no, 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 she she was gonna be dead as soon as soon as he came through. He's like, Oh, thanks. And blast. She's the everything. ultimate representation of Zendarian authority. Mm -hmm. She'd be the first one to go. Yeah. Bye bye, Nova Prime. But anyway, like I said, so you expect you want to be in charge of everything, but you can't even make sure that your number one nemesis at this point is dead. Like, what is it we always say, uh, Michelle and Casey and I, when we're talking about The Walking Dead, if you don't see a body, <laughs> they're not dead. Yep. They're not dead. You walked away with her still alive. 
and left it to your little peons to take care of. And when she falls over the dam, what do they say? Oh, nobody could survive that. Which yeah. would say you boss me. Nebula I'm in the watch. It. Yeah. Like, no, no, call her that... being dead. This is a cyborg. She's going to die like regular people. I was like, you know Anybody. what? The I mean, she ain't gonna drown. It's like, what, what do you think she's gonna do? Drown? No, she ain't gonna drown. She'll be she's gonna crawl the fuck back out of there. No, you should, you should. if you know her story, though, we know the only reason why she is a cyborg because she kept losing the Gamora. Like, how many times do you think she was near death? Right. <laughs> it's not for Gamora. So I, I just, I was like, okay, whatever, she's whatever happens to y'all, y'all, y'all deserve it because you didn't double yep. tap. You didn't make sure. You didn't make right. sure. And then she comes back. They have their little fights and stuff. And, and it's like at the end, they um she and Nova Prime are fighting each other and they fall out of a window. They fall down. Nova Prime is hanging on by a ledge. And and I mean, uh, not Gamora. Nebula is trying to help her up. And she was like, why would you want to help me? Why couldn't you just be on my side? And then you're going to try to shoot her and you fall to your death. Like, did you not read the room? Oh, it's so weird. It's like they actually combined Blade Runner with like the end of Die Hard. And I was like, oh, yes, dude. that's what I thought about at the end. Because I was like, <laughs> oh, she's Hans Gruber falling off the plaza. <laughs> which, which, which slight spoiler, ladies and gentlemen, will come up later on. But go on. The, the most common death for Disney villains. Yeah. They fall. That to is their- true. That is true. Yeah. That is true. And the funny thing is, so you said that, and you know the first Disney villain that came to mind, it wasn't any of the 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 queens or whatever. It was Scar. <laughs> well, Scar didn't fall. He got he got his ass eaten up. But well, no, he fell first. He fell first. He fell he first, fall. and then mm-hmm. he got eaten up. So he didn't he didn't fall as far as Nova Prime, but I'm I'm quite sure Nova Nova Prime is dead because she's not a cyborg. She's just a regular um he, yeah. well I, I I always think of Gaston because he fell to his death. <laughs> and so did uh the one in Tarzan. What was his name? Oh yeah. Yeah, he fell to his yeah. death. Yeah. Oh I mean, dude. You're you right. A lot of them fall. A lot of the Disney villains, yeah, they do fall. They fall. But it's just you know weird I, how I've Scar never, was the first one I thought about. I've never watched all of Beauty and the Beast. You know what? We're going to end. No, <laughs> <laughs> and no I was just thinking about that. I was like, wait, Gaston fell? I was like, oh, shit. I don't think I ever finished watching it. Oh, my God, Mike. <laughs> you, the fact that you just said that out loud. <laughs> I, look, I, you you realize you know I have no shame, so it's like I feel free to admit my shortcomings. So I'll fix that later. I, I might actually go watch go watch it when we finish doing this. But shit, okay. Oh but yeah, God, I mean it, it is it is kind of a kind of a trope, you know, the slow motion fall after the shooting. Like oh, oh speaking of slow motion, <laughs> that part where they were walking out slow motion and Cork was like, like "Thank yeah, you guys for cool. indulging." Me. <laughs> I fucking love Cord. I love him because he would do the stupidest stuff, and it was. It's just, it just yeah. makes sense. It's it fun. just feels right. It I love feels it after, very it right. Feels right. I loved it after after Nebula Nebula arrowed everybody, and Howard called her a show off. She was like, "It's called style. Look it up." <laughs> like I said, the banter in this whole episode it's between awesome. everyone, I love it. I love oh, it. you left out the best part. The best part is Nebula didn't trust that motherfucker from the jump. Right, right. right. <laughs> because what was it she said? She said, as soon as you told me by to any means rules, necessary, yeah. I knew that you had broken our oath. Yeah. Because I was, because, okay, before she revealed that, when all of this was going on, when they're like, she and Yon Rog, they're, they're climbing down into the, into the mainframe and they're, I was sitting here looking at her like, why are you, why are you moving in front of him? Like, why are you walking in front of him? Why are you doing all of this stuff expecting? Uh, and and I know it was probably because she had just broken him out of prison. It's not like he had weapons or anything, but this is the on rock we're talking about. So it's, I was sitting there looking at her like, I hope they're not making Nebula stupid in this episode. And then 
of course we get the reveal later that she wasn't she was just she was doing her own thing i was like oh okay because that happens later on in one of the up other episodes where a character acts a specific way and then in the next episode we see them i yeah. thought that they were going to make them a villain and i was like that don't oh okay this is what you're doing so i they put me for the okie dog i fell for it but, i think i think i think that she was counting on on her if if he was going to try to do something like hit her from behind that she was counting on her reflexes to catch him or do anything like that. Like she wasn't worried worried about him doing like catching her off guard because she was like he's he's not as fast as I am because it, it, which was proven when she when the arrow came towards her and she just reached up and caught it right before it right before it hit her in the forehead. Well, like, she she knew she knew that they needed her alive all the way up until the core, so yeah. she could walk in front of him because he wasn't going to do anything to her until she got the information. Yeah. So she but like I said, when I first watched it, that was before I knew that she knew yeah. what the deal was. So I'm just like... right. Yeah, because I'm like you. I was like, why is she trusting this dude this much? Like, she really she really like... Well, she said him. she wasn't trusting him, but her well, actions were showing actions that she were. was... Yeah, she was maybe not completely trusting, but she wasn't very suspicious or she didn't act... She, she was her acting part. Like yeah. She played her part, definitely. She knew it. Obviously, she knew what she was doing. Obviously. Because even if she had died, and when they used the thing, it still would have destroyed the ship. Yeah. Whether she was right. there or not. Yeah. The only so, benefit she got from surviving was getting revenge. Right. So shout my out to question Ronan is, having a slow ass, shout out to Ronan having a slow ass ship to get closed into a force field, closing at like five miles an hour. <laughs> So yeah. did Ronan survive that? Like, did he jump no, off? He, he okay. didn't see nobody. Okay, I well, no, no, but but it's like we saw him. He was like, he was like, he was just looking straight. He was like, yeah. and then and then it exploded around him. So okay. he might not be, he might not be dead, but he's gonna be. He's gonna take him a minute before he comes back. Okay. Because yeah, so he might he has at least he's a little bit of fire damage. So <laughs> a little bit of fire damage. It's just the flesh a flesh wound. Just the flesh <laughs> <laughs> it's just the flesh burn. It's just the flesh burn. Right. Flesh burn. I think this was a very strong start to the second season. Because really I mean, even with the last season, I don't think we had any complaints about any of the episodes. Like they were very well done. Like I said, even though you have these characters who in the regular, quote unquote, the regular MCU probably would never mesh together. They work very well in this. So if this is what y'all are doing for the first episode, the, the next eight episodes should be really good. Yeah. Right. The, the cool thing for me is, is all even from the first season, is their ability to locate a specific point in order to tell their story. You're right. Like, it says, what if she joined Nova Corps, but it's actually, what if Ronan turned on Thanos? Yeah, that's where everything changed. Yeah, I think it's cool that they're able to do that mm -hmm. and um and and make it convincing. Yeah, because like I said, I I watch these episodes and I'm like, <clears throat> oh, that totally makes sense. Oh, I I like it. It makes sense. It's not something right. that they're just they're not jumping the shark. They're not pulling stuff out of here and saying, okay, we're gonna throw it in here. It's just and one little decision. Yeah, one little change. Right, yeah. one little butterfly effect. This is why why I love the comics, like the actual comics. Like those are my like favorite comics because it's like you know how one story goes, but then it actually retells the story. And when as you're reading it, it's like you cannot put it down. It's mm -hmm. like you literally are this is it's the literal definition of a page turner because it's like it goes right up to the point to one point, then it switches, and you're like, oh shit, what the fuck happened? Oh damn, what did that, how the fuck is it going? Oh damn, oh wow. And it's like it, I mean it's in, I mean those that whole whole what if series is fucking incredible. Mm -hmm. So I can't wait to see the rest of them. And then we get yeah. new characters in this season. Um, you know, yeah, Kahori, I cannot wait to see Kahori because I mean, see, this is the thing that I really appreciate about the MCU that is kind of present in the DCEU, but you really, but it's not really at the forefront of it. Is that the MCU does a really good job about representation, about like showing other races, other genders, 
and other showing cultures. and give, giving other cultures and giving them shine, not just as a token, but actually as mm. something that is that is feasible, that has meat to it, and that is really that that really shows the that shows them as something more than just a caricature. Like Miss Marvel, Miss mm. Marvel showed showed Muslims and the Pakistani people as as having depth to them and showing what what actually goes on. It's like mm-hmm. with Wakanda Forever and Black Panther, it's like they showed Africa as a diaspora and showed how, like, you know, that they, they showed like there's more to people than what you than what you think you know. Mm-hmm. And it actually helped actually helps people to look further into other things, other things about other cultures. And I think that's one thing that the MCU does very well. Mm-hmm. It gets a lot of flack for it, but you know what? Fuck the haters. This is this is what actually this is one of the things that I really like about the MCU. Yeah. yeah, and I'm excited about that episode too because you know I was having a conversation with the person I live with, whom I'm related to by marriage. I've missed um, that. I'm so glad you said that. I've not heard that in so long. Okay, I'm sorry. Go ahead. And and I was saying, you know, why did they create this new Native American character? They're Native American characters in you know, in Marvel already, Danny Moonstar, and I just started naming her. She was like, yeah, but like, they went and did research. And, you know, they went and talked to experts and historians to create this character. I was like, oh. I yeah. Guess that's- I mean, shoot. I mean, really, Echo Echo is Native American. But yeah. it's like, the whole thing is, it's like, the way they're doing it, that they're, they said they're doing it, is like, they're doing the whole thing in in the Cherokee, uh, is it Cherokee or Choctaw? Mohawk. I can't remember. Mohawk. They're doing the whole thing in the in Mohawk in the Mohawk language. Like they're not translating it into English. It's subtitled in Mohawk. Yeah. And yeah. that is mind blowing. I can't. It's like I really want to see how that turns out. Like, yeah. That is just really interesting to me. I'm excited. And then even just even just <laughs> the um the titles of the episodes for this season, like. When they released the t- the titles earlier, yeah. I was like, "Wait, so how are they gonna do this?" So it's like you have, "What if Nebula joined the Nova Corps?" Episode two is, "What if Peter Quill attacked Earth's mightiest heroes?" Episode yeah. three is, "What if Happy Hogan saved Christmas?" Episode <laughs> four. So, so even with that, you're taking characters that are basically second secondary characters and you're bringing them to the forefront. I love it. Episode four, what if Iron Man crashed into the Grandmaster? That should be fun because they actually yeah, that, did bring Jeff Goldblum back to voice the Grandmaster. And that and that, ep- that episode is the one that actually was supposed to come out last season that explained how Gamora defeated Thanos. Yes. And mm-hmm. got the, and got, and got the, um, the Stone Crusher. So. Right. So you have episode and five. And also the if- Mad, that's also oh. the Mad Max episode, too. Yeah. Yes. yes. You have episode five. What if Captain Carver? What if Captain Carter fought the Hydra Stomper? Episode six is what if Kahori reshaped the world? Episode seven is what if Hella found the Ten Rings? Which, which I'm, I'm excited for that one. Ooh. That's gonna be interesting. Yeah. Episode eight is what if the Avengers assembled in 1602? Okay, that I, one. I will that say one. this. I have that seen that one. episode, and I think John Favreau had probably more fun than anybody in this whole series because of the, some of the shit he got to say in this episode. And then the uh, season finale is what if strange Supreme intervene? So all of these titles is like, when I saw them, I was like, okay, they are bringing the noise this season. Yeah. You know, so I, I'm, I'm really excited and I have seen the episodes. I know that, you know, I know what to expect. I'm not going to say much because Anthony has not seen them all yet. So no, but, yeah, it's yeah, it's need, a it's a really it's a it's really a great, great season. season. They they did they started strong, they finished strong. So I will say that. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yeah, this is this is a great I loved all the throwbacks. I loved the, the one thing I really liked was the was the tone of this episode. Like it was mm-hmm. it was so heavy and it was so it was it was it was just it was like film noir. It was it was kind of like I kind of I half expected I have expected Nebula to sound like um wasn't let's make it sound like the Maltese Falcon like Philip Marlowe, 
be like, yeah, I was dark, dark and stormy night. The dame walked in and told me she was going to give me a chance. I was like, no, I kind of have expected her to nebulous be. voice. And it just, it was, it was throwing me off because I'm so used <laughs> to that being like killer nebula. Right. And so to hear that voice on good guy nebula, it was just, it was very weird. And then again, like I said, the banter throughout, because you have Howard and his gruff voice and nebula and her voice, and they're going back and forth. And again, I'm just like, it makes sense. Just, just to piggyback off what Mike said, I, the tone and a lot of a lot of people try to do. You remember Dark? Was it Dark City? The whole Blade Runner motif yeah. and and that, um, the feel of it. And there are a lot of shows and movies that have tried to replicate that mm -hmm. and not do it as well as these animators did in this thirty yeah. minute. Right, you know, right. TV show, That's true. and and I think it was. I thought it was amazing. Okay. So, yeah. All right. Shout, oh, oh, shout, shout out to Drax losing his mind about losing losing everything in a slot machine. Yeah, I caught that. I was like, wait, is that Drax? <laughs> I was like, again, oh, dude. because I would not think about Drax being a gambler. It, you know, the Drax that we know that just would never cross my mind. And see, I, I thought I thought I thought they were going to do more, have more cameos like that because th it kind of reminded me of the Thor the Thor episode of What If last year, where ev where everybody was in the, was in Vegas gambling and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And it's like I thought I thought I was going to see uh, maybe a couple more, but I didn't see them. Oh, also, I don't know if it's me, but I noticed that the railing when she went up to see Howard. Kind of look like the railing in the first the black first Black Panther when they went into like the casino there. It's oh. like hmm. I was looking at it, I was like, and I and I was I was watching I was watching a summation show and they and they put them side by side. I was like, huh, that actually hmm. is, that actually does look like it. So it's just you know it it just shows that Marvel Marvel is kind of derivative of like they take they take good things and kind of they take things and put them in other shows to kind of to kind of make you make get get you give you things you're familiar with mm -hmm. so that you can you can kind of be curious about other things mm -hmm. so, yeah. the movie was dark city it was rufus sewell Kiefer sutherland yeah. jennifer conley william hurt fantastic movie okay if we do choices that's going to be one of my choices for us to watch yeah. okay, okay. It's, a, it's a good movie okay all right well I yeah, this is, the, the, yeah this is a great episode i cannot wait for the next one I really and I'm I'm getting ready to start campaigning for for a Howard the Duck movie. I don't care. I'm getting it. He's gonna he's gonna he's gonna run casinos and he's gonna be the hero and it's gonna be two hours and forty five minutes. I am campaigning. No. I'm actually gonna start writing this now as soon as we no. get off here. So go so go ahead and close this out. No. And on that note. <laughs> <laughs> that is it for our show. You can find us online at www.fandomhybrid.com. We are on social media on Instagram, Facebook, Threads, uh, X, all the stuff at Fandom Hybrid. You can watch our videos on our YouTube channel. You can chat with us on our Discord channel. And you can listen to us on all major podcast streaming platforms. Thanks for listening. We hope you join the conversation next time.